I'm a very small version of Gary Bouton, and this is another Zara TV tutorial at ZaraZone.com. This month, I'm going to show you how to create an illustration that looks as though lettering is carved out of stone. This is the effect you'll learn how to create this month. If you go to ZaraZone.com forward slash tutorials, you can download the marble textures Francis Proctor was good enough to provide us with and a sample Zara drawing or two, although you will be starting this month's tutorial from scratch. Now I thought an appropriate thing to be classic and eternal would be love lasts. You can choose any saying you like, but I'm choosing this one and I'm using lithos black, however you could use alternate typefaces such as uh, Newland, Jazz Poster, just as long as the font is bold and a, a little classic looking, perhaps even a little primitive. Once you've typed the saying, go get the Marble 2 JPEG texture and either drag it into the document window or you can choose File Import. In any event, once it's in there, with the Marble 2 JPEG image selected, select the Fill tool and then from the Fill Type drop-down, choose Repeating Tile. Then with the Shape Editor tool, marquee select the two right control points, hold Control to constrain, and then drag the control points over to the right of the document. Then marquee select the two bottom control points, hold Control on the keyboard, and drag down. Okay, so with the large marble shape selected, press Control B to put it to back so that your text is in front now. And what I want you to do is to uh, scale it and then right drag and click a copy so you have a duplicate and this duplicate is going to serve as your reference. Before we go any further let me show you why we're doing and what we're doing. In my little drawing here uh, in Western countries where we read from left to right we also tend to presume that lighting goes from left to right. In other words, it's casting down and to the right. In my little sketch here, you can see the word stone looks as though it's extruded because the lighting is facing upper left all the time. Now, what I'll do here is fill my lettering with a granite texture and use the bevel tool and drag the handles to inner. If you take the control handle, and change the lighting to the opposite direction, it looks chiseled. From a wireframe view, here's what I did with the bevel tool. In other words, I took the uh, control handles and pulled them in. We're going to do the same thing with the saying now, with the duplicate. So back in our Love Lasts document, let's choose Bitmap as the fill with the fill tool and go to our thumbnails and choose the marble. Now it's going to be a little difficult to see right now, however, if we now choose the bevel tool and let's do wireframe view so we can see what's happening. Drag those control handles inward and I think right now they look extruded but that's uh, what we're going to do is change the lighting so that we have a good study for which areas in our final drawing are going to be light and dark. Now I'm dragging on the lasts. Now that looks a little chiseled and the word love does too. You might be asking, why don't you just use the bevel tool? Um, it's because you're not going to get exactly the right lighting and the texture is going to be a little bit blurry. So these steps I'm showing you this month are to uh, help you illustrate something in a more realistic, in a, in a more photorealistic method. Let's start with the L. A lot of these letters are the same and I'm not going to walk you through every single one of them. But at the cap of a stroke, what you want to do is draw a triangle and I'm doing that with the pen tool and uh, by default uh, if you clicked on the marble texture every new element that you create is going to have that same pink marble texture and on the other end of the stroke you want a triangle and then what you want to do is hit the center line of this L and create a piece at top like I'm doing here and what I'm showing is not perfect but you get the idea you start at the outer edge and you uh, complete the four-sided shape at the center of the document. Now this is wireframe. Let's go to full quality view and uh, pieces will appear to be missing but they're not. They're actually filled with the marble the last selected object. So let's uh, first select the top rectangle and then I want you to click on the photo tool. And what you're going to do to make this texture darker is to take the brightness slider 
and drag it a little bit to the left until it looks darker. What we want to do now uh, with this piece, as our reference shows, is darker, so we make it darker by selecting the photo tool and decreasing the brightness. Now, any of the shapes that you've drawn that don't have the marble fill, what you can do is copy a shape that does have the marble fill and press Control shift a paste attributes into these pieces. Now you can see the right hand side needs to be brighter, as our reference shows us. So you use the photo tool and increase the brightness. Now if you were watching, I didn't do anything to create the left side of this chisel text, but there's already that black text behind it. What I want you to do is choose the transparency tool for the word love, and then adjust it so your shading, actually, for the left hand side of the L is solid. It's not textured at all, but that looks correct. Now that you know how to do straight strokes, such as you'll find in the V and the E, let's try something curved, the O. Now don't freak. Uh, what I've just done is I've copied the reference object so that we can see what needs to be done next to the actual O. One of the first things you want to do is split the center. So use the Shape Editor tool to create an oval that more or less runs through the center of the O. As you can see here, it filled itself with the last used fill. We don't really care about that. With the Editor tool, uh, refine your selection a little bit so that it's it it's mostly a concentric shape inside the O. Once you've done that, choose the selector tool, hold shift and select the background darker O, and then press control 4. That's the shortcut for arrange, combine shapes, slice shapes. And what you have now are two objects that are grouped. Now what I've done here is I've control clicked on the outer one to make it more transparent. You can do that too just so we can see what we're doing because we need to make another slice and that will be a diagonal running through the O. You can see the 45 degree angle I've made there, completing the shape, completing the shape with the selector tool, hold shift so they're both selected, then press control four. Now you've sliced that group of objects. It's not immediately apparent, but you have two groups of shapes now. You actually have four shapes. And I think it's time to ungroup them and what you're going to do now is some creative shading. Now, first of all, uh, the upper left object, what you want to do is use a stained glass linear transparency once it's filled with um, the marble texture. And then what you want to do is move the direction handle so that the opacity is at upper left and the transparency is at lower right. Now this effect isn't dramatic enough, so I think what we need to do now is go with the photo tool and decrease the brightness. And as you can see, compared to the right, that upper left of the O is looking pretty nicely shaded. We're gonna move on now to the uh, lower right, fill it, make sure that it's filled with uh, the marble texture, then with the transparency tool, what we're going to do now is the same linear gradient except bleach the bottom object. And with the photo tool, let's make that a little lighter to intensify the effect. Now that's looking pretty good. Okay, we have two more left to go. As you might imagine, the inner upper left piece needs to be bleached so it looks like the one on the right. So once it's been filled with the texture, as I've just done now, you want to uh, go get the transparency tool and choose bleach mode and it should be transparent toward the center and the most bleaching should be at the upper left. Jumping ahead, I'm doing the bottom right now and that should be the uh, stained glass mode. I have to uh, fill it with the texture first and then make it most opaque at the bottom right and let it go to transparency. Now, one finishing touch, if you can't get an intense enough effect, what you do is, for example, this piece here, press Control K. What that does is clone a piece and put it on top. Now you've got two bleach modes going on at the same time, the effect is going to get more intense. And I've just done that with the bottom right and the inside. And 
And now that we've got the O pretty well taken care of, I'm going to show you one of the hardest characters to chisel, the S. Now, what you want to do is, um, as with the single stroke items, you want to put a triangle at either end. And then what you want to do, here I'm taking the, uh, the bitmap copy of the bevel effect as reference here. And as you can see, it's dark at top left and light at bottom right. I've just filled this object here with um, the marble texture, which makes it impossible to see. So I'm going to add an outline here. One of the first things you want to do with the pen tool or the shape editor is you want to create a triangle at the uh, at the upper left as you can see where the stroke ends so I'm doing that now and that object has a uh, marble fill inside of it what this leads me to want to do next is to uh, try to do the center line and what happens when you get to the end what we're going to do is uh, use the slice command again. So I'm going to go outside of the shape, bring it up and around, and close it here. And shift click the S itself. Now that both objects are selected, uh, you can press Control 4. And what that will do is we've got the sliced S now. And what I've done is I've made the outline thinner here so we can see what we're doing. I think orange was probably a poor color for the outline. Once you have these shapes created, I want you to create sort of a rectangular shape over the top of the S and then take the grouped objects, shift select them, and combine these shapes. The reason why we're breaking these shapes at the uh, at the top is because you'll notice that our reference object goes from dark to light to dark again as it transverses down as the S shape goes. Then I want you to uh, take the uh, pen tool or the uh, editor tool and hold shift and then uh, slice what remains of the S again. What I want you to do now is to use the photo tool and darken this top left shape. That looks about right. And our next step is to take the transparency tool and make it go from uh, full opacity to no opacity. And as you can see, if you compare it to the left, um, that's fairly representative of what the bevel tool can do. I'm selecting the second shape, the one neighboring it now and that's sort of a medium tone so um, what I'm doing is lightening it just a little and using the transparency tool there to make the uh, top piece and this piece meet at uh, what is zero opacity a medium shade let's work our way down now to the uh, bottom of the left hand side and according to our uh, reference this needs to be darker so with the photo tool Decrease the brightness of this shape. And you use the transparency tool to linearly blend between the top and the bottom of this piece. Now the bottom piece, as we can see on the left, would take a uh, darker color. And again, uh, I've used the uh, transparency tool to go from full opacity to transparency toward the top.
And I'm going to skip ahead uh, because you can see that you need to do some bleaching, some stained glass, and some bleaching from top to bottom on the, on the uh, right-hand side. So I'm going to just skip over, remove the outlines, and show you that we have a pretty nice S there. Now, in the word lasts, there's two S's, so there's absolutely no reason why you can't make a copy of your hard work there. Now, because that S goes to transparency at certain points, uh, we need to get rid of that last black S that we've used. So we can delete that and move this over. And this is what the completed assignment looks like. You already know the steps for doing the straight strokes. And I think this is a terrific and inventive use of transparency, transparency blending modes, and also the Photo Tools brightness feature to make chiseled text. Now hang on for a second. Now that you've made these letters in pieces, there's a really neat cheap trick that you can do. You can make metallic text. And I'm going to show you how to do this next with text you've already created. What you do is copy the L, for example, from Love Lasts. Now these are all bitmap fills, so we're going to change them now. What I want you to do is take the fill tool, set it to circular gradient. And I want your inside color to be white and your outside color to be a darker gray. Now, all the pieces are filled with a circular gradient. However, the control handles are going to be off in Mars someplace because we changed this from a bitmap to a circular gradient. So pull them in, move them around a little bit, and this is absolutely not photorealistic shading. But it does look like metal. And that's the long and short of it. You can use this fake metallic technique on any combination of shapes that you've created beforehand for the chisel effect you learned earlier. I hope you've had fun this month, and I hope to see you next month right here at...